All right, we are six minutes in, so we will kick off with uh, introductions and new faces. Definitely don't see anybody new here. Uh, release planning and updates. Um, from the PAC side, we shipped a patch last week. And other than that, our next release date is May 12th, so it'll be a while. All right, I could speak a little bit more on the platform side for the PAC Orb, which is a Circle CI tool. Um, I'm currently working on making some changes based on some feedback from the community. Um, I anticipate that there will be a release uh, short they're coming um, after those changes. Uh, there's no set release cadence for the PAC Orb, so just wanted to call it out here. I can speak a little bit to uh, the life cycle. Um, we're continuing our work, our initial work on stack packs. I think last week we had scoped this epic to a bunch of issues, and this week we are driving forward um, one issue that will unblock a whole bunch of other stuff. So uh, stay tuned. I can actually give a quick spec release planning update as well. Um, we're going to look for a broader forum to try to share this message, but because Stackpacks is so much work and it's going to be the focus of the implementation team, uh, we're trying to keep the next releases of the spec pretty tightly scoped to things relating to Stackpacks so as not to uh, bundle too much stuff into the releases with Stackpacks and overload the implementation team. And that's not to say that no other changes can come in, but we would like other, like the implementation maintainers to be focusing on stack packs. So other changes would be coming in as external contributions or they'll be coming in after stack packs, I think is the plan. So if you have a RFC that is approved, um, the implementation and core teams are not going to necessarily pick it up and add it to the spec or then add it to the live cycle right away. That would be delayed until after stack packs. But if you would like to contribute, take responsibility for contributing that directly, then we're definitely still here to support you. So you're accepting PRs, is that it? Yes, we're accepting PRs. <laughs> that mean a PR to the life cycle first so that it can go in the spec or like how would that work? So like first you create a pull request to life cycle to prove that you can do the work and then you create a pull request to the spec or I don't know how that, how would you? I think like we're generally pretty trusting and we don't have a, a wide amount of um, anonymous contributions to the spec. So it's more like if you're going to make a spec PR to platform API 07, if you give us a thumbs up that you're also planning on making the lifecycle PR for platform API 07, then we're full steam ahead. But if it's, I'm going to make the spec PR describing a very complicated thing and leave it to the implementation maintainers, then we might, we might park it for a bit and let stack packs go through first. Yeah. To be clear, like I don't think this is a significant change. We're happy to take any PR at any time <laughs> on yeah. about anything. So send away. This is just uh, warning everybody that uh, if you're waiting for us, you're probably going to be waiting a bit longer. And then hopefully after stack packs, we're back to uh, business as usual, which is a little bit slow, but not quite as slow. <laughs> All right, any other release planning updates? Seems like no. I'll go ahead and kick off our RFC review. Uh, first thing on the list is discrepancy and result JSON. This is a new one. 
opened four days ago. Um, probably needs some labels. This looks like a distribution. Oh, is this distribution specific? Yeah, it has to do with the registry API, right? Got it. Uh, and does that get spec registry something? Spec build pack registry? Yeah? No, it's not a Well, I think this right? is just actually changing the RFC contents, which I'm not sure what our policy or process for that is. Oh, I see. It um, means so doing that, getting a Sherpa, that's definitely a thing. Uh, and then I think we just want approval here. I don't think it gets, no, no, you don't have to pick anybody. It's being picked as we speak uh, by the tools. Should probably be Whoever gets picked, gonna... look into this and let yeah. us know if we need to vote on anything. <laughs> this should probably be somebody in the distribution team, right? That's Not what happens. That's how the team. automation works. <laughs> <laughs> this okay. has been going on for like months. <laughs> so if you put the distribution label on something, it'll only pick somebody in the distribution team as the assignee. Okay, correct. <laughs> I've seen a couple without assignees that were all on the platform team, though. And I don't know what's going on with that. Prove that. It's, uh, add RFC for pack okay. interaction mode. Two down from Steven's cursor. Let's go find out who removed themselves from it. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I haven't noticed any kind of consistency here, but it's good to know that's fucked up. Investigation here. You don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, add build right flag for layers. Uh, this is uh, from Sam. Uh, any anything you need this week? Just looking for reviews. Yeah, I, I put this in. I think last week after a discussion in the uh, office hours around this functionality. Um, the only thing, maybe we can talk later. Uh, but I had a few open questions. You want to put it in the agenda? Yeah. Could you add the uh, build pack label, I believe, or implementation label? This would be a spec change to uh, build pack spec. Yeah. Find a minimum standard for docs in order to ship the lifecycle. This is a sub team specific RFC. So I specifically tagged the people who I think would be most interested in it. Sounds good. We'll move on to the next one then. Uh, add RFC for pack integration mode. Sorry, pack interaction mode. Yeah, I think I'm just waiting for reviews at this point. Awesome. Do is this a? I, I don't recall Anthony. Is this a sub team uh, RFC? I think we. Uh yeah, I, I believe we said this is going to be platform. Um. Cool. So then maybe. So I guess uh, we'll discuss this there. Yeah, uh, Stephen, do you mind adding the label for sub team RFC? Yeah. Am I on the platform sub team still? I thought I was just on implementation. Yes. The script just picked you. Yeah. Well, now I know. <laughs> it might be why I thought it didn't work before, just because I'm still, I forgot that it was on. I was still on the team there. I had a question on this one, sort of about what fidelity of feedback you're looking for. I'm like very positive, like, let's do pack interact. But are you, and there's like some examples of mock props and stuff. Are we interested uh, in like diving into the details of like, this word makes sense for this concept in the mock-up. Here's things we should show, or are we just like pack interact, thumbs up, down type situation? Are you asking me? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I did get the thumbs up or down. I'm, I'm done with that. So I guess I'm waiting for it to be approved or not, right? Uh, whatever steps need to happen there. I'm eager to implement the issues myself. Uh, so it, it, kind of, I'm kind of waiting for next steps. Maybe I should say that. 
I know sometimes I get confused personally when something is a like a big idea for you know what could be a bunch of features that go into this. Um, whether or not in the RFC process we're approving just the big idea or whether we should be diving into the what features go into it. If that makes sense. I don't know if anyone else has a take on that. I think it's, it's a big idea as long as we're all aligned to the you know, details of the big idea, it's probably okay. Unless that somebody... sentence of the details of the big idea is it the details or is it the the idea? <laughs> I would say if an RFC doesn't say how something sh exactly should look, right? Then you know it's a uh, or somebody like um, when there's a issue or a PR that says it should look like this, then that could get kicked back up to the RFC process. Um, if somebody says this is too big of a, a decision to make for this future and we need to discuss or we need to get core team approval for it. Like, I feel like there's already a process for deciding if something is an RFC or not, right? We can apply yeah. that to the details of RFCs that are high level once they've been accepted. I guess what I would love to do for this is like make it clear we're approving, yes, there should be a PEC interact. And then maybe the details of like what and how we display things. I don't even think it needs to be an RFC that goes up to the core team, but it might just be easier to have conversations around it for interested parties if we broke them out into smaller discussions. I agree. Um, the only thing is if, if you know Anthony wanted to start building this out or if other folks wanted to start building this out before um, figuring out those details, right? If it's like easier to develop this kind of graphical thing, you know, without a lot of planning ahead of time, I wouldn't want to say, no, you can't do that. You have to, <laughs> you know, get the RFC for all the details approved first. I agree with that. Maybe just make this clear that this is like, yes, voting that we should have PAC interact. And then we're going to create a bunch of sub issues. And then if people have, you know, like a, an opinion about one particular sub issue, we can move it there instead of like bogging this down with that. I guess I have some micro opinions that I'd love to have a place to discuss, but I don't want to put them on this RFC because I don't want to drag the RFC down with the micro opinions. Sounds good. Uh, anything else on this one? Sorry, I just, I just want to make this a productive exchange, right? Like is sub issues the right place for more fleshed out details? Cause I agree, it's not fleshed out yet, right? Or is it maybe the threads where we can get a breakdown or, or what? So I was gonna suggest this uh, maybe offline. I was gonna maybe just ping Emily, but uh, since it's being brought up, uh, my suggestion would be like throw in as many details as you want on here, right? And then as part of the discussion, they could be deferred ultimately, right? Like the, the voting could still commence and then just ideas be brought onto this document. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're blockers, right? Um, and then on the other side is there is an avenue for essentially detailing or at least staying on top of what the changes actually look like, which would be PR reviews. So maybe that's just something that you'd want to be a part of for these particular things is just review the PRs and see what it's actually looking like. That makes sense to me. So maybe we can throw a bunch of details on here, but like have a one sentence disclaimer that's like this. RC is proposing the introduction of this command. All of these are examples of what we could do with the details to be worked out later. Because I don't want to make this seem like the source of truth because sometimes people go back through RFCs to see exactly how things should work and if it's un I like to keep clear what's uncertain and what's decided in the RFC. All right, I'm gonna move us along to the next one. Uh, just an interest of time. Uh, add bomb to layer content metadata. Uh, 
Uh, Sam, anything here you're looking for just approvals? Outstanding issue. Um, so there were some suggestions by Emily, which I updated the RFC to reflect, but there's one outstanding issue that Matt Lee pointed out around their reuse and the fact that um, you could have all the layer flags set to false, but the bomb would still be persisted at least through one build cycle, I guess. Like when you restore the layer, but all the flags are set to false, you would still export the bomb to the, uh, to like uh, report normal. And I guess that sort of breaks this RFC 52, where we decided not to do that. This right, that intersects with like a philosophical issue about the build bomb, right? Is it everything that was actually present in the build container or is it everything that was intentionally present in the build container? Because <laughs> in a case where you're getting a layer back, but you're not using it, um, those things were still there. And also we don't know whether you actually use the tool in that layer to do something, even if you didn't choose to opt into exposing it to pre subsequent build packs, caching it or exporting it, right? Yeah, a, a layer that a, like a, yeah, a layer that a build pack creates that's just intended for it to use and just during that run, seems like a thing that, you know, it's like a first class idea, right? <laughs> it's not. So that should uh, go in the build bomb. A layer right. that gets restored and then ignored because you didn't opt into using it doesn't look any different from a layer that was intentionally created as a temporary tool. Uh, so you might just end up with some weird things in there. But it was still restored. It was there. Yeah, and I think that's the way to approach it is like, you can't really track what was in your environment when you did that build, right? It's sheer existence can have influence, right? You can imagine a library on LD path, for example, like whether or not you intended to use it, it does have some sort of effect. And so I think when we see the requirements that come from companies about being able to track the provenance, even at build time, a lot of it is around like, what was the ambient state since it all has influence. It's the, the bomb, so it doesn't affect reproducibility. So I think we just add it, right? Yep. The build pack made the decision that it would get added in the next run when it said cache equals true on the current run, right? The build pack explicitly said, yep, cache this layer. I want it back on the next run. And so the decision for it to show up on the next run was, was sort of made at that point. So I think I'm comfortable with that too. It's not like a, a behavior that arises out of something that's unexpected. We probably shouldn't use the uh, RFC review to uh, you know, make decisions about the questions in the RFCs. So Sorry, um, I just got excited. You know, I, it's a good question. I, I just need to. Um, We'll go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, Sam, if there are more things than that, please add it to the agenda. But it seems like we're we'd be good there. Yeah. Cool. Uh, propose the creation of best practices and guidelines. This looks like, does it have a quorum? One, two, three. Yes. Yes. This yeah. could go. Uh, should I put it into FCP or do you want to wait for Ben? Did you want to look at this one? It's in FCP. Oh, it's, it's already oh. past the period. I guess someone has to merge it in. Sorry, I missed the label. Uh, to be merged yesterday. Who's the Javier? Are you going to get this one? Trying. Uh, me and uh, Ben are working out some, some issues with the pushing merging cool I, you should be good to go now i'm not i'm pinging you about it okay 
Uh, pack cash options. This one hasn't seen a lot of review. Javier, where are we at with this one? Uh, this is a sub team one. So yeah, skip. Cool. Is there, should we make a rule that we skip the sub team RFCs during the review? I haven't thought that yet. was, yeah, I don't know. Um, I wonder if we can update the uh, link in the doc to exclude that label. Cool. And drafts too. Uh, allow setting default command arguments that can be overridden by the user. This was Sam's and log, I guess. Yeah. I, I don't know if you would want me to close this or. I remember Emily said you might you might be yeah. open to an RFC there. I'm gonna do it. It's just it's a lot of things to do. <laughs> uh, recommend for different build time and runtime user IDs. This is an FCP and FCP closes. Was that yes today? I got assigned to Terrence. So we can work. Cool. And check, maybe I should paint Terrence in there. Cool. And Where we now disambiguate layer metadata files from app metadata. This is the same I put it on the agenda. Um, there are four alternatives. Uh, can talk about it. Cool. Sorry, I missed that it was on the agenda. Uh, guidelines for accepting component level contributions. Um, I resolved a lot of things in here. Uh, I think I'm just waiting on reviews. Is that right? Maybe you should explicitly re request them. Oops. Or Ben, do you want to re request or? Not the approvals, just the comments. <laughs> oh. Not the approvals, just the comments. You address Terrence and Joe's needs, right? I'll head in in a second. I, I had a bunch of them open to take a look at. Cool. Let me add other. I already approved it. Don't re request me. I read it recently. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Who are we missing on here then? Uh, nobody, because I opened it. Okay, cool. Uh, issue generation. This is an FCP. Is that ready to go in? It was a long time ago. No. Terrence is the assignee. You are helping with something creating. with him. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll go with him. Cool. Uh, last one project descriptor domains RFC. FCP, lots of issues created. Yeah, that's the one uh, Ben and I are working through merging right now. Awesome. All right. And then that concludes our RFC review. I've updated that link, by the way. Um, I'm not actually sure it's a good idea, especially as skipping the drafts one, but it's in there now. Cool. Uh, thank you. Next thing is um, build right flag for layers. Sam. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, do, do you mind sharing the screen? Uh, Very, you could share too if you want to. Would you prefer me though? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Give me one second. Um, so this, uh, is, is the 
like sort of situation which I discussed last time where um, you want a layer um, that cannot be modified by future build packs. And there are cases where you want a layer that can be modified by future build packs either through like an environment variable uh, that the build pack is set. The use cases are when like you want a collaborative workspace which is cached across runs. The only like real question I have is that the introduction of this build right flag is only applicable when there is a build flag. Um, ideally, I would have wanted the build flag to be an enum, which was like off read or write, but that would break a lot of things. So if anyone has any suggestions on how to deal with that, that's one thing. And the other thing is uh, like, I, I don't know what others think of this idea. Uh, I think we ju I just discussed it with Stephen last time in the office hours. Um, we do have an option for, if we, if we did want to not make it a Boolean, we talked about build, launch, and cache being kind of bad names for the flags in the past that like should be something more like expose, export, and maybe cache is okay, but like there's like three different types of caching. <laughs> That's just one of them. <laughs> so not really sure about that. Um, if, you know, if we want to, this kind of brings that up again, like should it be build equals true is an old way of saying, you know, um, expose equal true, you know, write equal false or whatever, but then, uh, ex you know, you could set expose to read or write. That'd be a way around it. If you're looking, we could just change the name of the build flag. And so this would be the only enum and the other two would, would also change or? We could keep the other two the same. We could, we could just fix, because build is the worst one, right? Like launch, yeah, okay, you know, layer is going to be a launch layer, right? Cache, okay, it's going to be cached. But build, like, what does the word build have to do with that other build packs can access this dependency, right? It just it feels very out of place. The cache is also kind of bad because there are layers that you want to reuse that are launch layers that they not, I don't want to say naive, a reasonable person might assume, like, oh, I want to reuse it, so I should cache it. Uh, it should be called like restore. It's like, do I want it back is the question. None of them are good. I'm just saying, I think build yeah. is the worst. The problem is we use them everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, that's, that's the docs problem. and yeah. It's really easy to fix though without breaking anything. So we can just keep supporting the old values. You know, they're not, it's not really a, a migration problem. You just have to, someone has to open the RFC, care enough about the name. Forgive me for not having read all the details here. But if if someone is using one of these build right layers, and by someone I mean a subsequent build pack, does that mean they have to know the path to the layers directory of the previous build pack? Uh, so the idea was that whichever layer, whichever build pack is ex intending to expose. A, so even this flag is also sort of poorly worded because I couldn't find a good way of describing it, but it it means that if a layer is set to build right equals true, it would be converted to a tarball that's exported at the end of the entire build process. Uh, whereas a, a layer where build right is set to false would be exported immediately after that specific build pack has finished building export meaning that it's converted to a tarball immediately rather than at the end of the build process where some other build packs could modify it. So- Because right now we do them all at the end. So anyone could really modify things if they want to. Yes, exactly. Does this mess with layer reuse though? I feel like this creates all sorts of weird potential couplings between build packs where you don't really know who's written into your layer and maybe the metadata doesn't describe it. And At least this, states explicitly what the intention is, whereas currently you can just do whatever and you wouldn't know that if you could reliably 
say that the metadata on the layer is correct or if it's been modified or not. At least here, if you say build right equals true, uh, you agree to exposing yourself to changes by other build packs, including mm -hmm. saying that, okay, some other thing may modify the metadata. You agree to that, but right now, it, this is the default behavior and we don't, we explicitly forbid it in the spec, but you can do it anyway. Uh, and you can do it unintentionally, which is worse. So that, that was the main issue because of which I created this, because what was happening was um, future build packs were using some binaries on a specific build packs layer and executing that binary had the side effect of creating additional files on the same layer, which mm. was causing this specific layer to change, even though it, it shouldn't have. And it was causing a push to the registry because the the image, uh, sorry, the layer ID was changing. So that was that was the main reason. And, and debugging this whole process, like figuring out which future build pack unintentionally changed this layer was uh, is, is, is very hard to debug. So oh, that makes sense. I had a lot of concerns about the metadata too, but what sold me on it was that the build pack that writes the metadata opts into other build packs also writing to it. And so there's never a situation where somebody expects metadata not to change and somebody else changes it. And it's actually like Sam was saying, it's stricter than the way it was before in a sense, because the, there isn't this bug in the implementation that lets you violate the spec. The good about the strict part, um, although I need to work out details, we'll change the platform API a lot, right? Um, I wonder if there's a more intuitive way to express the less strict part. Like, I don't want to introduce more directories, but do we want a shared layers directory that every build pack gets? That's where you can look to even see if there is a thing in there instead of having to know the path to it kind of thing. I, I like, I kind of like that the discoverability is also controlled, if that makes sense, that because there's no, there's no, the only conventions we have are POSIX conventions. Behind that is, you know, environment variables that things can expect to see, you know, using that as the mechanism that, you know, allows for discovery seems kind of like the most normal thing. And then if you created the shared layers directory, you know, telling build packs, oh, they have to look around for a particular named layer under a particular build pack ID would be really not great because build packs aren't supposed to know about each other's IDs. Um, so I, 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 I kind of liked keeping it in the same layers directory, kind of using the same conventions. Isn't this what we have to do now though? Doesn't it have to look for the layer under the other build packs layer ID? No, so in this in this case, the normal way right now, when a, a build pack says build equals true, right? It adjusts all the POSIX environment variables to add bin and lib and all of that stuff so that the build pack doesn't have to know about the build packs ID, it just can black box the path. Yes, this is something you know, an LD library path or path that I'm allowed to see, if that makes sense. Uh, the other mechanism that's really common is a build pack sets an environment variable using the env directory that points at that directory, and that's how it gets exported forward. In this case, it just means that those directories, when they're exported forward, the current means we have are become writable, right? Whereas right now they're always writable, but we pretend they're not writable and tell people not to write. <laughs> yeah. So you must not do it. <laughs> So I I'm I like this a lot. All right, I think it has my approval at least. Makes sense. Thank you for talking me through it. I'm sorry I haven't read the whole thing yet. Uh, I I still don't know what to do with the flag. That's still an open question. So if anyone has ideas on how to deal with the fact that it's only applicable or it's also incorrectly worded, because that's not what's happening exactly. Uh, it's just postponing the uh, the layerization at the end of the build process instead of at the end of the build phase of a specific pack. So I, I don't know how to express that in a concise way. The word right there doesn't bother me. Like 
if we had a Tommel had a nice enum where we could say, you know, build equals read versus build equals write that, or, you know, expose equals read, expose equals write or something that would feel great to me. Um, I wonder if that's getting into like the same reason our current things are confusing. Like imagine coming into that fresh and you're like, it's already hard to know what a build layer is supposed to be. And like, is it a write or a read one? And like, you're forced to have the choice because it's an enum and you're like, well, I'm writing to it. Um, you know, like maybe you want to call it like shared layer or build yeah. editable or I actually like having it being a separate thing. So people have to go out of their way to know it exists in order to opt into that functionality. It shouldn't be like a in the normal uh, process flow diagram. That's not a question you should be forced to answer. You should just end up in the default one. You have to go out of your way to end up over here, I think. I also like that these are all Booleans too. Like, I think I kind of prefer that design to the coming up with magical strings and pretending like they're you know, a language construct we don't really have. Yeah. Maybe like if, you know, build right is set to true, we just also treat it as a build, build layer. Right. What happens then if build is set to false and build write is set to true? And someone explicitly adds both of them in. That build. build. <laughs> what about writable? Writable equals true. And then it just it doesn't have any meaning for, and it actually could have meaning for all the layers. Yeah, sort of. It just wouldn't, wouldn't be very useful for launch because usually the other build packs can't see the launch layers. Which is why it might be confusing, right? right. Well, yeah. I mean, what do you yeah. mean? Well, what about the case where it is launched? There are definitely build and launch layers, right? Yeah. I, I think oh. the only concern I have with writable equals true is people might think that it means that the layer is writable in the final container image, like with the UID, group ID type thing, as opposed to by subsequent build packs. We do this all transparently. Like, what if we just made everything a normal layer that we tar up right after we create it? Then we look at timestamps and make delta layers from the changes made by previous build packs if they I, have them. <laughs> my my idea behind that RFC was to not have those delta layers because of those unintentional rights. I wanted to get rid of those unintentional rights somehow. So even if you did add that, you would still have those unintentional rights persisted in the image if it was marked as launch equals true, which I did not, like that, that does not seem sane for any user that there's some other random build pack modifying it because of side effects of some binary. What if we just always throw out the deltas? It's like we export everything right after it runs. And that's what gets restored. And that's what gets exported on launch. And you have to redo your delta if you're going to delta. Then what? what's the shared layer directory where multiple build packs collaborate on? That is cached. It's not cached. It's the same place it happens now by accident, but we just never store the result of it. Yeah, but that, then you could just use the temp directory and which is why I wanted this because if you do want to cache build results, like you have multiple layers contributing, like, or using a specific build cache layer and you the, want to restore that. The goal of this is not just to fix a problem, it's to add a feature, which is, layers that are shared between build packs and are cacheable and recoverable, right? I mean, that, you, that you can already do. <laughs> the, the idea was to make that unintentional, <laughs> like, I don't know if you want to call it bug or feature, and then introduce the original 
intentional thing as the right thing. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't really there before. You could just violate the spec and do it, right? But it's not just to patch that hole. It's also to introduce this ability formally as something you're allowed to do safely. I got to think about it more, guys. I think you're right in the uh, general need. Well, one thing that might appeal to you about this is that it doesn't have any performance hit. We, we talked through a few different implementations involving checksums and things like that um, to, to get to making it read only. And this, this one I like the most, or sorry, to get to making it safely writable. And this one I like the most because it didn't introduce any performance hit whatsoever. It takes exactly the same number of <laughs> cycles <laughs> as uh, um, what we were doing before. All right, anything else on this one? Uh, next thing on the agenda is disambiguate layer metadata. Actually, do you mind if I bump the last topic first, given sure. the amount of time we have? And... I'll move it up. Uh, oops, L limitations of, just deleted it, and it back. limitations of the current attack process. Yeah, uh, this is also something you were discussing in the last office hours um, around the current limitations when it comes to uh, a couple of detect and build scenarios. The first one, uh, like to give you an easy example, imagine that you have um, a stack pack which can provide any system packages you have an intermediate uh, build pack that requests mixins from the stack pack. So like it, it's a, so you have, let's have a more concrete example. So you have a apt build pack or something, uh, an apt stack pack that can provide any system packages. You have a Python build pack that can uh, provide Python dependencies to future build packs. And then you have a pip build pack that requires Python. Um, now you want to set things like the requested Python version through the pip build pack. So let's say you have, uh, like you're, you're doing some detection logic in the pip build pack, which uh, allows you to figure out the uh, Python version. You can, you can think of something similar for Go. So let's say you have a Go mod build pack, which figures out the version constraint from the Go mod file, and you have this Go build pack that just provides Go. Um, there's no easy way for the Go mod build pack to tell the to tell the Go build pack that this is the version I require, and then for that Go build pack to add, like request the mixins from the stack build pack. Oh, because the mixins it requires are different. Uh, so say there is a way with the metadata to like pass a when you make a require in the build plan to tell the providing build pack something else about it. We actually used to have version as a first class construct on that until we removed it. Um, but it's about the provider that you've required something from now wants to make a different request to its provider based on what was required. Yes, exactly. So I, I, when we talked about this last time, I had a, a crazy proposal for it. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is, isn't possible using the current API. We talked through a bunch of different options um, or like interpretations of this. And I'm, I think we, we can't do it using the current, you know, what we have. But one option would be right now that provides API is really simple. It's just one name, right? And like we could expand that, like there's, there's room to expand that to be more useful. Uh, you could have something a little weird in a provide that says, if if a require matches this provide with certain metadata, I think is what we said, then it implies additional requires. <laughs> and so so a provide can, can then specify requires if it gets matched. The, the, That's hellishly complicated. <laughs> the, the 
issue I had with that is that last time we were discussing of doing some like string matching for this. And it's not as simple as that because uh, let's say your Go mod build back requests a version that's Go version greater than equal to 13, uh, sorry, like 0 0.13. And your Go build back can only provide versions 15 and 16. Uh, and now there's no way to do string matching on that uh, because you need to have the semantic meaning of the various metadata fields in mind to resolve it. Okay, so the provides has a map of the key where the keys are all functions in the value. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So why can't the, I think I missed one step in this train here. Why can't the pip build pack just request, like who's installing the py Python here? From the, the system, the system. So there's a stack pack installing the system package with Python. Like why is there an intermediary? Simply because you you like let's say you want to plug and play build packs or you want uh like some abstraction that abstracts away from like the system packages because you can provide python e using either a tarball or through apt or through yum or through whatever else you you need some abstraction in the middle rather than directly depending on uh like apt to get your Python because otherwise you now have forced this pip build back, which it, which could technically be stackless to be dependent on one specific stack. Um, this is a problem with our stack pack plan, not a problem with the build plan as a whole where we forced everything into mix in names, but and therefore it can't expose agreed upon abstractions, but that's also bad. I'm, Maybe I'm, a stack pack could provide a mix in with an alternate name or something. <laughs> but I'm currently facing this without stack pack. So I, mm. I, I use a package manager that does not require root and that can provide all sorts of packages. So let's say Conda, for example, which is a package manager that does not require root and can provide any sort of package, not just Python package. And I'm using that as the way to uh, sort of like request these intermediate dependencies to provide to my pip or go build, uh, like go mod or pip build back. And you end up with the same problem there. It's not a problem with stack packs. It's a problem that will become more evident once we have stack packs, but it is a problem with the spec right now. I need to think about this one too. <laughs> uh, the the other detect limitation. I don't know how much time we have. Five minutes, okay. The other detect limitation uh, was um, now. This is not a limitation in the spec, but the limitation in how easy it is for a user to understand the detect API. So. Um, Typically, what happens is, uh, let's say you have, uh, again, I'm going back to the Python world, uh, you have, let's say something like poetry.lock, which is something used by poetry, which is a separate package installation thing than pip, but you can use that to convert it to like a requirements.txt, which can be installable by pip. That's how the Paquito community uh, Python build back currently works. So the issue there is that you need to teach someone uh, like how to construct this whole detect step with a detect step that always passes. And then uh, what fails is the matching of the provisions and the requirements. And then you have to account for this whole thing uh, which, which is not the most intuitive thing. Alternatively, if there was some simple API where your like this poetry build pack could be in front of the pip build pack, it could modify the app workspace so that it converts the poetry log file to the requirements txt file, so that when it gets to the pip build pack, it just sees the requirements txt file and the detection logic is simple. Uh, so 
Yeah, I feel like you get into a lot of trouble when you start modifying things during detect because then the next group will behave differently. Um, I definitely know the issue you're talking about though, where there are a lot of times like on the Java Paquetto build packs, we basically just make everything pass always yeah. and provide what it could provide. I'm like, I can't think of a situation where based on what I found in the after, I would run, but I will always provide something and then someone else can force me to run. I wonder if just like having pass, true, false, in some ways was our mistake. Like, should it always just have been like, if you really can't do anything, you provide nothing. nothing. And that's the way to totally opt out. But, but then the strong encouragement to provide something. That would probably make more sense. I think the big trade off there is, I think that's like a better workflow for people who write a lot of bill packs. I think it's a harder workflow for a casual person writing their first bill pack, thinking about like what detect is. That, that was so that's why, like I said, this was not an issue. Like this is not a limitation. It's just how people understand the detect process. Like it makes yeah. it really hard for them to think of it in, in terms of matching provisions and requirements rather than just one build back doing its own thing where it detects and if it detects true, it builds, which is sort of what all of our presentations currently sell. Like there's a build pack that does detection and then if it passes, it goes to build. So people think of it as a single unit mm -hmm. rather than a group of build packs working together. Um, yeah, I think even in the Paquetto community, we have a split, right? It's like Java just has one giant group and whatever you run is about matching provides to requires. But in some of the other language families, there are many groups that each have a subset of exactly what buildbacks could possibly match together. And they basically use true false to opt in. Um, in the whole ecosystem might be more comprehensible if we push people harder one way or another. So the, the ideas I had was like introducing a new phase for the first problem, not for this, a new phase, which is a resolve phase, which runs in the opposite direction. So like you do detection from the first build back to the last build back and resolution from the last one to the first one, which is again, extremely complicated, but it's an optional extra phase that you could opt into. And if you do have the resolve step, you can make modifications to the, uh, to the build plan. And then the build step runs as it is, uh, that still keeps the logic within the build pack and you can you can have arbitrary logic there and it's an ex like it's an extension which people don't have to worry about if they're not using it um and you also don't have to worry about running the same thing multiple times because only the the things that have detected all the way through can then run resolve uh so like with, with the tech, there was this other thing that it has to all run in parallel so that you could do multiple things at once, but only once everything is passed the detect stage, you sort of have a resolve stage, which is like part of run the anything that could have detected and yeah. then see if you still detect. Sorry, I have to go to my yeah. next thing, but we'll come back to this.